All right. Well, welcome to Ash Wednesday, everybody. I'm very, very glad that you were able to make it. Um, this is a very holy, holy evening. Um, it is time that we remember that we are human, very human. And it's a uh, time we remember that in these human years, uh, sometimes we don't do such nice things. And it's a time to ask for forgiveness for those things that maybe we need to say I'm sorry for. So with that, let's start with the prelude. Just looking on, for this is your story. Enter the story. Enter, enter the story. Enter the place you belong. Not just looking on, for this is your story. Enter the story. Ash Wednesday begins a journey of turning back toward God. It's a day when we look at how sometimes we're very self-centered and our lives have become a way that uh, where we fall short. We fall short of what we want to be. It is a day when we call all of our angers, our hatreds, our jealousies out from the very dark corners and we embrace them as just simply part of being us, part of being a human being. Lent is also a time of healing. We open up our lives so that we may see the depths of our soul. It takes courage to be vulnerable. It is a time of confession, stardust is not only a reminder of our need for forgiveness, but also a reminder of our connection with earth and how we can be instruments to healing. Just looking on, for this is our passion. Enter the passion, enter the story, enter the passion, enter his passion.
The stories of faith are not just long ago stories. So too now we find ourselves lamenting unjust actions in the society in which we live as well as our own lives. Step one in preparing our lives for this Lent season is to lament and to confess. We have regrets about what we have done that we wished we had not done and what we have left undone. While so many things that are becoming tragically common in our day seem so out of control, we also must accept that sometimes we do not step up enough to enact the change that must happen for all people and all creation to thrive. Dust and ashes touch our face, mark our failure and our falling. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow. Take us as disciples, washed and wakened by your calling. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, come. Dust and ashes soil our hand, greed of market, pride of nations. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow as we pray and struggle through the meshes of oppression. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, come. What I have to read for you today is from Stephen Garnis Holmes, a United Methodist Church uh, pastor who is a poet. We are dust and breathing, sadly, more attached to the dust than the breathing. We are the mark of sorrow, not a body but particles, ashes of grief born on wind ash of 9-11, of towns burned, dust of Mosul, of Kiev, of a million dead, of 10 million enslaved. Time's faint dust settles on us till we become ourselves a faint layer in the earth. Living among death and its dealers, we stand at the edge of our own grave. Our dust cries silently, not merely of our evil, but most deeply of our sorrow, our need to be saved, to be revived, to regain our breath. And so, forgiving one, you both stain and anoint us 
mark us and heal us. We bear your agony on our foreheads. You bear our sorrows, so we may bear you. You who breathe us into life, spirit that blows where you will, gather tenderly our grieving dust up from the earth and breathe into us once again that we may become a living thing. We are going to have a time of communal confession at this time. And um, at the end of the confession part, I'm going to um, ring the bell and I'm going to give you um, almost two minutes to just sit and close your eyes and think of those things that you need forgiveness for. And when you are done with that silent time of personal confession, we are going to um, bring forth the things that, we, that bring us life. And so with each confession, I would like you to please respond, we confess, Lord. God, our source and ground of being, in you we live, move, and exist. In your image we have been made. You celebrate the goodness of our humanity and call us to live fully and love deeply. Yet today we confess that in many ways we choose to live beneath our good humanness in things we have done and things we have left undone. We have neglected our calling to be your image bearers to all of creation. We confess, Lord. We have dehumanized others by refusing to love them, by gossiping about them, and by making fun of them. We have dug our heels into us versus them, thinking that makes it easy to condemn entire groups of people that we do not know. We have been reactionary, allowing fear to control us and dictate our actions. We have sought an eye for an eye instead of loving our enemies. We have closed our ears to the cries of the poor and the oppressed, the immigrant, the refugee, the orphan, and the widow among us. We've been greedy, and in our lust for more, we have closed our eyes to all the opportunities to share out of our abundance with the hungry, the naked, and the stranger who are in need. We have failed to steward creation responsibly, thinking only of ourselves and not the future generations or the one who gifted us with a beautiful world. And in the process, we have de dehumanized ourselves. We have willingly defined ourselves as consumers and taken our identity and worth from how much money we have or what we possess, instead of grounding our identity in our calling to bear your image. We have been hypocritical, judgmental, and angry. All of these are destructive, not only to others, but also to ourselves. We have used our religion as a weapon of exclusion instead of building a bigger table for all. Free us from the bondage of our guilt, shame, pain, and lament. 
I invite you now to take a moment, to take two moments of silence to simply let go and let God. And now we get to pray our prayers where we walk with God. And in your response to each prayer, please say, let it be, Lord. Now with each prayer, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open. May we live into the fullness of our humanity, the humanity that you called good. May we live with hands open in generosity toward God, our neighbor, and even our enemy. May we take seriously the call of Jesus to embrace our crosses instead of seeking crosses for our enemies. May we steward the earth and our brief lives here with gratitude and care. May we tune our hearts to the music of the spirit, following her lead as we take the next right step on our journey. May we live lives that imitate Jesus, being broken, and poured in love for others. May we practice resurrection here and now. May we experience the full and abundant life to which Jesus invites us here and now, and everybody says, Amen. So in the sixth century, they started this ritual, beginning with this Lent season of imposing the ashes as a sign that we have embarked on a journey of repentance and forgiveness. And so, considering our COVID restrictions, your vaccination status, and your comfort level, I invite you to come forward for the imposition of the ashes if you are not comfortable doing so with this action, 
All you have to do is simply close your eyes and with your imagination, receive the forgiveness and set yourself free. This night, let us prepare our hearts to free ourselves from pain and guilt. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his wonder and grace.
I am going to offer you this benediction and I ask you to please leave in quiet contemplation um, and prepare yourself for the coming of Sunday, which is our first Sunday of Lent. Receive this benediction. So we have begun. This season we will put a frame around a bit of life. The divine artist offers us a poignant beauty each day in our own stories, in the stories around us, in the heartbreak and pain and joy and awe of a simple moment turned significant. This night, we have prepared ourselves to train our eyes to see to open our hearts, to feel, to ready our minds, to grasp, to bear our souls, to know. May you be blessed by the sacred frames that surround the moments of your life that you dare not miss through this Lenten season. Amen.